Come, you blessed of my Father. Receive the kingdom prepared for you from the foundations of the world. Alleluia. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And the Lord be with you. And so we open our hearts to the mercy of God's love in this Easter grace, acknowledging even still we depend on God's grace for our holiness. Lord Jesus, you raise us to new life. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgive us our sins. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you feed us with your body and blood. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. And glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you. We bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, and we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, and you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who gladden us year by year with the solemnity of the Lord's resurrection, now graciously grant that by celebrating these present festivities, we may merit through them to reach eternal joys. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter and John were going up to the temple area for the three o'clock hour of prayer. A man crippled from birth was carried and placed at the gate of the temple called the Beautiful Gate every day to beg for alms from the people who entered the temple. When he saw Peter and John about to go into the temple, he asked for alms. But Peter looked intently at him, as did John, and said, Look at us. He paid attention to them, expecting to receive something from them. Peter said, I have neither silver nor gold, but what I do have, I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ the Nazarene, rise and walk. Then Peter took him by the right hand and raised him up, and immediately his feet and ankles grew strong. He leapt up, stood, walked around, and went into the temple with them, walking and jumping and praising God. When all the people saw him walking and praising God, they recognized him as the one who used to sit begging at the beautiful gate of the temple, and they were filled with amazement and astonishment at what had happened to him. The word of the Lord. The psalm is, Rejoice, O hearts that seek the Lord. Give thanks to the Lord, invoke his name, make known among the nations his deeds. Sing to him, sing his praise, proclaim all his wondrous deeds. Rejoice, O hearts that seek the Lord. Glory in his holy name. Rejoice, O hearts that seek the Lord. Look to the Lord in his strength. Seek to serve him constantly. Rejoice, O hearts that seek the Lord. You descendants of Abraham, his servants, sons of Jacob, his chosen ones, he, the Lord, is our God, 
Throughout the earth his judgments prevail. Rejoice, O hearts that seek the Lord. He remembers forever his covenant, which he made binding for a thousand generations, which he entered into with Abraham and by his oath to Isaac. Rejoice, O hearts that seek the Lord. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us be glad and rejoice in it. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. Our readings from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. That very day, the first day of the week, two of Jesus' disciples were going to a village seven miles from Jerusalem called Emmaus. And they were conversing about all the things that occurred. And it happened that while they were conversing and debating, Jesus himself drew near and walked with him, but their eyes were prevented from recognizing him. Yet he asked them, What are you discussing as you go along the way? And they stopped. And looking downcast, one of them named Cleophas said to him in reply, Are you the only visitor in Jerusalem who doesn't know the things that have taken place in these last days? Jesus said in reply to them, What sort of things? They said to him, the things that happened to Jesus, the Nazarene, who was a prophet, mighty in deed and word, before God and all the people. And how our chief priests and rulers handed him over to a sentence of death and crucified him. But we were hoping that he would be the one to redeem Israel. And besides all this, it's now the, since the third day that took place. Some women from our group Well, they've astounded us. They were at the tomb early in the morning. They didn't find his body. They came back and reported that they had seen an angel, angels who announced that he was alive. But then some of those of us went to the tomb. We found things just as the women had described. But him, they did not see. Jesus said to them, Oh, how foolish you are, and how slow of heart to believe all the prophets spoke. Was it not necessary that the Christ should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? Then, beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them what referred to him in all the scriptures. As they approached the village to which they were going, He gave the impression that he was going on further. But they urged him, stay with us, for it's nearly evening and the day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. And as it happened that while he was with them at table, he took bread and said the blessing and broke it and gave it to them. With that, Their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, but he vanished from their sight. Then they said to each other, Were not our hearts burning within us? Well, he spoke to us on the way and opened the scriptures to us. And so they set out at once and returned to Jerusalem, where they found gathered together the eleven and those who were with them who were saying, The Lord has truly been raised. He appeared to Simon. Then the two recounted what had taken place on the way and how he was made known to them in the breaking of bread. The Gospel of the Lord.
So today we have two amazing experiences of our risen Lord. One, to these disciples who didn't know that Jesus rose from the dead, and yet he came to them in all of their grief and all of their sadness. I'm sure we've all had an experience where something horrible has happened and we couldn't make sense of it at first. The other reading today from Acts is this amazing moment after Peter has come to this profound experience of faith in the risen Lord. And what happens is Peter and John, they go to the temple at three o'clock, it says. Why did they go at three o'clock? What did we do this Friday at three o'clock? That's when Jesus died on the cross. And so Peter and John go to the temple to pray because they've had an experience now of the risen Lord. They've been touched in the spirit and the outpouring. And they decide to go into the temple and give thanks to God for the gift of Jesus and the faith that they have in the resurrection. Quite a contrast between the two people on the road to Emmaus who don't know that Jesus has risen and whose lives are in shambles. We find another person today, this crippled man from birth who's been carried lovingly many times to the temple, to this beautiful gate where he's begging for alms. I can't imagine what it must have been like to spend your whole life crippled so you couldn't walk. And you think about how that was in the ancient world where there was no technology, no wheelchairs, nothing to make it really easy for you to have a future beyond begging. And he sees Peter and John going to prayer. And he does what any beggar does. Maybe you've been in Chicago, maybe you've been here in town, and someone has asked for a handout. What do you do? Isn't it strange that sometimes we can be extremely generous and give someone something, and other times we might feel awkward about the encounter? I remember the first time I met someone in a wheelchair as a child. I didn't really know how to approach that person. What do you say to them? Well. Peter and John didn't have a choice. The man says, please, please, please give me some alms. And Peter and John walk up to him and they say to him, we don't have money to give you today, friend, but I have a greater gift. And Peter, who's been told that he's gonna receive this gift of the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, does this amazing thing. He prays over this man and says, be healed basically in the name of Jesus Christ the Nazarene, rise and walk. And Peter with gusto takes his hand. And to the man's surprise, who's never been able to walk because he was crippled from birth, he gets up and walks. And Acts of the Apostle tells us he was ecstatic. He jumped for joy. I would too. Wouldn't you? And in that amazing moment, everyone recognizes him. And he praises God. I want to ask you a question. If you said yes earlier, that there's been a time in your life when you can remember that everything was crushing and hard and you weren't sure how to pick up the pieces like the two on the road to Emmaus. Have you? You had the other experience where everything that was messed up changes. I mean, do you believe that Jesus can perform a miracle in our life? Do you believe that he can take the brokenness that is ours? And if we enter into that dialogue with him, he can raise us up. That's the gift of Easter. Not that we won't experience doubts, not that we won't have sometimes deep despair, thinking that everything we thought we were going to have is going to be one way and it turns out to be another, but that we can go to the Lord, that he will come to us as we turn to him in prayer, 
the two on the road encounter Jesus in the scriptures and in the breaking of bread. And they too got up and ran back to the rest of the disciples to announce the good news. Just as the man in the temple discovered Jesus the Nazarene could turn someone who was a cripple to a great new life and future. Years ago, I met a man who went out with his friends and went drinking. I've done that before, before I was a priest, went out drinking and partying. And this young man thought he could drive home fine, but he had too much to drink. One of his friends died in the car and he ended up being a paral paralytic. I met him when he was giving a talk to young people about not drinking and driving, not thinking they were invulnerable to harm. He gave his talk, and you know who drove him? It was his wife. He hadn't been married when he was injured. And you know who else was with him? His daughter. When the talk was done and I thanked him for giving the talk to our teens, I marveled and turned to him and I said, did you know your wife before your injury? And he said, no. And I looked at him in his chair and I asked him a question. With permission, may I ask you a personal question? He said, sure. I said, did you ever imagine that you'd have this beautiful wife and child. He said, I didn't know what I'd have after my injury, but I was encouraged to turn to the Lord. And instead of giving up on my life, I put my trust in Jesus. Where will you put your trust in Jesus this week? And so let us pray. For our Holy Father and Bishop Robert, for our seminarians home from seminary, for our deacons in the gift of vocations, for all those who are caring for the sick, for those who are visiting on our homebound and helping them in this time of need, we pray to the Lord. For those who are struggling to process all of the applications for unemployment, for all of you and the friends and family you have who are worried about their future in unemployment, that God may give you the patience as you wait in line, that God may make that check come before you doubt and give up hope, we pray to the Lord. For our friends and family that have asked us to pray for them, whether they're sick or lonely, especially for members of our own community that are ill right now, we pray to the Lord. And for the prayers that you hold in your heart, we pray to the Lord. And so Heavenly Father, we bring our prayers and our needs to you. We pray that you allow us to encounter you in the word and the breaking of bread, that you may transform that which is broken that we too may dance with joy and faith and promise through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. To your goodness we have this bread to offer which earth has given and human hands have made. 
will become for us the bread of life. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. To your goodness we have this wine to offer. Fruit of the vine in which human hands will become for us our spiritual drink. Lord, wash away my iniquities. Cleanse me of my sins. And so pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Father Almighty. The Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of God's name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Receive, we pray, O Lord, the sacrifice which has redeemed the human race, and be pleased to accomplish in us salvation of mind and body through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to claim you, O Lord, but in this time above all, to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he's destroyed our death. By rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land and every people exalt in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they now acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these blessing, these gifts and offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, with Robert, our Bishop, and all those holding to the truth hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. And remember, Lord, your servants and all those gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them, we offer you this sacrifice of praise or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them for the redemption of their souls and the hope of health and well-being and paying their homage to you, the eternal God living and true celebrating the most sacred day of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ in the flesh, and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever Virgin Mary, mother of our God and our Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul and Andrew and all your saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers in all things may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, Graciously accept this oblation of our service and that of your whole family, which we offer and make to you, also for those whom you've been pleased to give the new birth of water and the Holy Spirit, granting them forgiveness of all their sins. Now order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted amongst the flock of those you've chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. For on the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands. With his eyes raised to heaven, O God, you his heavenly Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing and broke the bread. And he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and he gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which we poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. And therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts you've given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice and a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar and high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and every heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with a sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, in all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your sinners, servants who are sinners, we hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, with all your saints, Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. For you sanctify them and fill them with life. You bless them and you bestow them upon us. For through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. And so, at our Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accord with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of our Lord be with you. Let us share with one another a sign of Christ's peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. We pray, O Lord, that the fervent reception of the sacrament of your Son may cleanse us from our old ways and transform us 
into a new creation through Christ our Lord. And the Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Let us go forth and announce the good news. Mm -hmm.